All right, so yesterday, the Beaver Creek girls took on Hilliard Bradley and won two to one. We had goals by uh, Reese Brown and Kenley Mitch. Um, I just wanted to go over a little bit what I saw in that game. Um, as I always say, I'm not your coach. I'm not your coach. So you can choose to completely ignore what I have to say if you want to. It's perfectly fine. You know, uh, I'm just letting you know what I see, you know, as a fan of you, a fan of your coaches, you know, a fan of the game and as a coach. Right. So uh, when I heard that we were testing out this new formation, um, I was iffy about it. You know, I knew that against Springfield, you know, that's a perfect team to test something like this. Because if it goes wrong and blows up in your face, then it's not, you know, going to hurt you. Um, no offense to Springfield, but that's not a team that is going to be dangerous to us. I'll just put it that way. Uh, but against Hilliard Bradley, I felt that was also a pretty good game to try this out with because they're not a particularly dangerous team in any area of the field. In my opinion, um, most of their scores have graduated, so they're still trying to figure out who's going to step up and be a scorer for them. So I knew that, you know, they're a team that is to be respected because obviously if we allow things to get out of hand, it can blow up in our faces really quick. But I felt like it's the right team to try stuff like this with because overall we have the more solid team in my opinion we have the better team um so and it's not a team that's uh particularly greater in one area of the field than another so like you know they're not super super dangerous to us so i felt like that was the right move by your coaches um so <laughs> The thing about this formation is it's not universal. It's not a formation that personally I would recommend for every group. And it really is one of those formations that you have to consider the players that you have currently on the field. It's very important because if this formation isn't combined with the right rotation, it's going to blow up really fast. This formation, obviously, I mean, you can see it from yesterday, but this formation obviously focuses a lot on the midfield. It requires your midfielders to do a lot of running. Your midfielders are going to have to be really active if you want this formation to work for you the right way, especially on the offensive end. Um, it's a formation where you have to have a very disciplined striker. You have to have a very skilled a stri a striker with good speed, good ball control, and good timing. And the reason for that is during your buildups, usually in a like let's let's use a typical 442 for example. Your striker can just kind of gun it and then charge directly at the defenders and try to create opportunities for themselves. But in this 4-5-1, your striker is always going to be up there isolated by herself. So what that means is when she gains possession of the ball, she's not looking to attack right away. She's looking to hold while your midfielders build up. She's not supposed to turn around and then start charging directly at the back line because she's going to run into a wall every single time. She's supposed to stall and hold up the ball until the midfielders build up and get in place for the attack. This formation requires a lot of through balls. It requires a lot of movement and it requires a lot of discipline from every player on the field, especially the midfielders and that striker your back line 
does what the typical back line does, which is defend, hopefully, right? But everybody else has to be advancing on time, has to be dropping on time, has to be shifting on time, and has to create enough passing lanes for this formation to work correctly on the offensive end. This formation is created for counter-attack soccer. It's created to make stops in the center of the field so that you can build up. You can either build up using that striker or build up using these midfielders. Now, the two on the wings, I'm going to talk about that in a second too, but the two uh, midfielders that you have out on the wings are very important, right? Um, one of the reasons why they're really important is because you can generate a lot of offense through them. They're there to support that lone striker as much as possible. That lone striker, you want that striker to play as high as possible throughout the majority of the game. Very rarely is she supposed to drop back and come help defend. Even if you're being overrun, she's kind of supposed to stay up where she is, trust your midfielders, trust your defense, and just kind of sit up there and wait. Stay up there with the last defender and just wait. And as soon as she gains possession of the ball, if it's just one defender to beat, go ahead and go at her. But if you have multiple, then you're supposed to hold and wait for your midfielders to load up for the attack. Um, like I said, otherwise, she's just going to run into a wall, right? Um, so that striker can't be shifting too hard to either side. She can't be too far over to the right. She can't be too far over to the left. She can't be coming all the way back. She has to pretty much stay centralized and stay high because she is the main focus of the attack. Now, those two midfielders, they're there to support her. They're there to create opportunities for that striker and if, the, if if it's possible, create opportunities for themselves like you've seen with Reese Brown yesterday. And the reason why Reese Brown fits this formation so well, I'm about to talk about the strike, uh, the, 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 the midfielders, your outside mids right now. The reason why Reese Brown fits this formation so well is because Reese is really, really good at winning one versus ones. She's really good at creating... Uh, uh, um, opportunities for the strikers because she can beat the wing defender one-on-one -on -one easily if you're lucky she can actually lure out two defenders towards her and it creates a big gap for that striker to find space for a shot um and that's something that if you're the striker you have to be paying attention to you have to be ready for that cross and that's the thing that Reese does. She's very good at crossing the ball in. She's very good at taking advantage of a one versus one. She's going to beat just about any defender one versus one. And the really, really good thing about her out there on the wing in this formation is the fact that she can create her own shots from angles. She's very good with her left foot. So, I mean, she that's the ultimate weapon to have in a formation like this. That's why I said it's really important to consider the players that you have on the field. It's not gonna be that way for every team. It's not gonna be that way for every unit that you have on the field because not every player has the capabilities to run with this formation effectively. And that's just the truth. I've seen a lot of teams go to this formation and it starts out nice when you have the capable players out but when you start making substitutions and you know you bring in players that aren't really uh have the right skill set for it things can get bad really fast so that's something con to consider if you're the coaches i think this is a team full of capable players that can do this it's just that players have to understand exactly what their roles are the do's and the don'ts um so um, and that's me talking about Reese, but whoever's on the other side should, you know, be trying to do the same exact thing that Reese is doing, right? Uh, so, like, with Caitlin yesterday, one thing I noticed that I really liked that she was doing, I don't even know if she was doing it on purpose, but one thing I really liked that she was doing is she stayed high, 
But as Reese is advancing the ball, she starts to run away from the goal and she's luring those two uh, central defenders with her. So it creates an opportunity for Reese to slip through. And I really like that she was doing that because it didn't just create opportunities for Reese, but uh, it creates opportunities for whoever your mid other midfielders are, whether it's Kinley or Olivia or whoever's up there, it's going to create opportunities for them. Um, so like I said, that striker, she's not supposed to really gun it. You know what I mean? She's not really supposed to uh, attack all by herself because that's just not how it's going to work. You're not, it's not going to be one of those kickball styles of soccer that we're used to where you have somebody up pressed against the last defender, somebody lob passes it, and then you're supposed to come sprinting up the field hoping you can beat three or four defenders. That's not the way that this formation is supposed to be played. Once she gains possession of that ball, hold, load, and your midfielders have to want to run. Typically, when it comes down to this formation, uh, it, there's a whole lot of different variations of it where you may have your your two wings, they're either going to play wide or they're going to play more compact. When they play more compact, it's because they're um, putting a little bit more pressure on that back line. When they're playing, playing wide, it's because they're spreading the defenders out. Uh, the three central defenders... Typically, you can play it with two who are more attack oriented and one more defensive oriented, or sometimes you can switch it. One's more attack and two are more defensive. So it just depends on the situation, depends what your coaches want you to do, and it depends completely on what the opposing team looks like. Now, against Centerville, oh Lord, I don't know. If we go to this formation against Centerville, I don't know how that's going to work. That's going to be really difficult because Centerville sometimes will. Savannah Connor is a weapon. I talk about this a lot. Like when she's on, she's on and she becomes a menace. Now, whether they decide to run her as the striker or put her out on the wing, that if we use this formation against them, I, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to go. I have no idea that, that, that I can see how that would be really tough. But the honest truth is, it comes down to your midfield. They have to want to be active. They have to want to keep their feet moving. If they're going to be slow, sluggish, just kind of standing around, ball watching, that's going to blow up in your face really fast, regardless of who you're playing. Um, I took a look at the schedule. Any of these teams, uh, honestly, the main two that I think we should worry about obviously is Centerville and maybe Mason but all the others should be winnable should be wins for us but <laughs> if we use this formation against any of these other teams and we're not playing it correctly it can hurt us especially since we have trouble scoring sometimes right so that's the basics of this you I mean it comes down to the midfielders now, you may have games where your coaches want your midfielders to be a lot more defensive. You may have games where your coaches want your midfielders to be kind of balanced. And you may have games where your coaches want your midfielders to be a lot more attack oriented and come up and support that striker and those outside mids. But regardless, it comes down to your midfielders. Now, your back line. This is important for your back line. As I said, your back line kind of does what they typically are supposed to do. But there's some problems I've been seeing pretty much all season with our back line. One, we're not dropping on time. We're not recognizing when the counterattacks are coming. We're kind of staying right there. When the midfielders are in the middle of a battle and it's only five, ten yards in front of us, we should start dropping back, <laughs> especially if we're playing against a team that already has a good speed advantage of us. We don't have to drop back 20 yards, but giving them a little bit of space, five to ten additional yards is optimal because especially against teams that have a good speed advantage over us, right? Find your mark from a distance, point her out, that's mine. So when she comes charging at me, I already have a head start. I can already be in position to stop ball 
or be in position to contain her instead of just letting her run right past me. Yesterday, we kind of had some problems when we weren't dropping on time and they were allowed to come charging at us and even beat us on the dribble. We can't keep allowing that to happen. So as defenders, especially if you're the two central defenders, if you get beat on the dribble, you can't just be trotting back into position. You have to recover quickly. That's a sprinting situation every single time. If you're just kind of trotting along and maybe you're just expecting your defenders to clean it up for you, somebody's gonna step in and stop this girl, that's what your mentality is, then you're not really doing your job as a defender. As a defender, pretty much, you're supposed to be um, always expecting the worst, right? Pretty much, you, 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 your mindset as a defender kind of has to be kind of negative. You have to kind of think, always, always assume the worst as a defender. Assume that your players are not going to stop her. Assume that the other defenders are not about to stop this girl. I have to be back there to be the one to stop her. That's how your mindset has to be as a defender, regardless of how good the other defenders are. Your mindset should be, it's about me. If they beat her, they're going to run into me, and 